Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you a 4 vs 4 on chemical and I'm going to be using KDA Berserk Airfoot. I wanted to share this game with you guys today because it was an epic one and the reason I have the options up on the right hand side, the settings for the game up on the right hand side is because it shows the score limit and you can see that I have set it to 4,000 points. Now the reason that I've done that, that is twice as many as usual, is because all of the middle sectors of chemical are worth three points and if one side gets an advantage early on it can end the game really really fast. So by doubling the amount of points needed to win I not only increase the length of the game, which allows us to get more epic games, but also allows for a bit more of a comeback potential uh, for your opponent if they have a bad start. So, as you can see, we are off, and <laughs> the epic game gets underway as the foxes start engaging us on the left-hand side. My Volpos unloading from the SBW PSHs. I'm also going to be trying to get this 100mm AT gun on target, but that gets hit very, very hard. It fires at the Saxon and takes that out, so we do manage to get a free infantry kill. But the foxes clean it up swiftly after, also taking an SBW PSH with them as well. I'm able to escape at least with the T813, so we're going to be able to refund that for 20 points. And as the foxes come up, my teammates Dessa and Niki BMD are going to get on target. Both the foxes go down. GR1 coming in, the tornado with those bombs. Going to hit pretty hard. Takes out another of my SBW PSHs, but this Volpus and the Dessa Niki going to survive with limited men. So a fun little engagement on the left there at the start. Meanwhile, across the board, things settled down. We have my line of Volpus set up. The nice thing about Volpus at the start of the game is they not only provide the RPG-18 for dealing with light vehicles and like killing enemy transports and stuff, but they also, when they are stationary, have the security trait, which increases their optics to good when they're not moving. So they kind of act as sort of pseudo-recon, whilst also having sort of decent engagement capability. Anyway, on the right-hand side, Bob Schutzen here. Uh, both of these supported by the military police. Military police not actually far enough forwards here. You can see that the circle of the military police is actually quite limited. And quite often it's just worth having the military police inside the same building as the infantry that you're trying to support with it. Because, as you can see here, it's not covering the Mochers and other Vopos. And same here, um, it's not covering the Conkers or the Vopos. So, ideally, I should have those a little bit further forwards. Anyway, my teammate on the right hand side, uh, Commander, he is currently covering this area of the map. He's come over with a few helicopters to help us out. Uh, that is certainly going to be able to shut down some of Taki's infantry. Just needs to be a bit careful of Taki's AA. Taki here playing the 24th Infantry Division, which is the US National Guard Division. And on the left we have Sethor, uh, he's playing the 2nd UK Infantry. Uh, my teammate on the island with me, he's playing the 35th Guards Air Assault. Anyway, MI24P here going to be trying to get the Cocon on target. M1 Abrams is going to smoke itself off, so it doesn't have to get his in the face by that. SBW PSH is, though, providing fantastic fire support onto the error rifles here as they come across the open. This is one thing that these SBWs are really, really good for, just engaging enemy infantry at range. They're basically out of range of the AT weapons of these infantry, but we're able to provide plenty of damage. You can see also we managed to kill off one of the M1 Abrams, which is really, really nice. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, I have invested in two books early on, just to, due to the sheer amount of aircraft that we've seen already. And that does pay off immediately with the, sh the shutdown onto the Jaguar GR1. It did manage to get a nice bombing strike off, but uh, the book's there getting some value already. Just need to make sure that I bring in some supply because they've used up a significant number of their missiles, as you can see there. Two of them missing, two of them left. I think this one it only had one left. Yeah. I love how it's modeled on the actual unit. Really, really cool. Anyway, T-62 is going to be heading over to the left-hand side to help deal with these foxes because the foxes were causing a lot of problems for me. So we need to shut those down. 
My teammates Desarniki trying to hold the line with the RPG-7s against these warriors, but you can see they are getting stunned. The cohesion's getting low, it's going to cause them to miss a lot, and then they get killed off. Whereas if I just have like a T-62 here ready to go, we can just uh, wipe them out with that. Meanwhile on the backside, Commander managed to sneak through, get a bunch of rockets down onto some opposing forces here. Ends up leaving a couple of Motres Vitko behind. Now we're going to try and retreat with his MI8s, but they have a long way to go, that's for sure. And finally, on the left, the T-62s finding the Foxes. So just going to be trying to kill these off as quickly as possible. Support the Vorpus as I push forwards, try and save some of my teammates' troops and just stabilize the front. So at the moment things are actually pretty equal as you can see. Uh, we have our sectors, they have their sectors. So we're going to change as Taki tries to contest the center sectors. You'll also see that I have brought in an RM70 and we're going to be seeing the true MLRS power of the KDA Berserk effort in this game. So starting here with an RM70 cluster and that's going to be targeting the enemy chaparrales to try and shut them down. Meanwhile, the MiG-25 RBF coming in with the bombing strike for the Fireteam Dragon and the leader. Going to demolish that building. And I think we did manage to take them out. So that's just going to stop them from contesting there. And the nice thing about the RM-70 is that it is actually pretty effective at taking out light vehicles so that's what we're trying to do with it Sh kill off the chaparral's enemy aa and then that can enable our teammates to use their own aircraft and also potentially my own as well books unfortunately missing the gr1 there a bombing strike coming through killing off another infantry squad things pretty intense already <laughs> so t62 is now going to be shifting further to the right at this range t62 is really really good for destroying these armored vehicles like the m2a1 bradley's here and the warriors and the foxes it's just an absolute field day for the t62s i've just got to be careful of units like this challenger that showed up on the left hand side now you might notice that we are losing to a plus two. That's because on the left side here, DSX has managed to push through quite nicely and get a lot of pressure onto our teammate Zeto. We're also now being contested once again on the left hand side of the chemical plant. The Dasaniki moving forwards. They're going to try and capture some ground get into better positions in these buildings then they can use their RPGs to start damaging any of the armor potentially but on the left MI24 coming across got a bunch of Mojutsun ready to go we got the T62s in support so we'll be making a push here shortly you might notice that I have brought up the special weapon of the KDA Bezek effort the BM21 napalm launcher this thing is incredibly strong you used to be able to get two of them in the deck i think now you can only get one of them because when they do hit they hit really hard and the napalm sticks around for a very long time these armored rifles for example that are going to retreat into those flames will take damage from that And all the while, we're going to be putting on as much pressure as possible with the BTR-60s, with the T-62s at range, whilst the Mudschutzen go in at closer range in order to get the kills. So, really nicely timed napalm strike there from the BM-21. And we're going to be able to capitalize on that and hopefully push out the leader that Sethor is trying to used to contest the center here. Meanwhile, my teammate actually getting, getting really, really far up with the Dasan Niki, but no AA to help him out is going to allow these AH-1Fs to clean house. Really, really 
unfortunate, but these AH1Fs are going to have a field day demolishing these units. Just look how quickly they go down when they get caught out in the open by those rockets. Purple's on the left side, still causing a little bit of distraction there, which is nice, but able to move forwards far enough to get rid of the enemy leader. So back to neutral in terms of points income. Now M1IP showing itself on the right hand side here. So we're going to try and take that out with the T62s. My T62s getting relatively low. But looks like Taki is going to smoke that off as we then change target. And we're going to try and finish off the SAS there and manage to take them out instead. And there is only a limited amount of SAS available, so once we get rid of them all, we won't have to worry about them in the future. And SAS can be really good at taking on infantry at close ranges. They also provide the AA, so a bit scary for my MI-24Ps, for example. The Tornado GR1 coming in again with a bombing strike. That one going to hit really hard absolutely deletes all of my mod Schutzen. A second one now going to come in, finish off any that were left, although it seems to miss there, and then it gets shot down, so that wasn't too bad for us at all. My books on the right-hand side here are currently just chilling. They've got the uh, ammunition truck nearby so they can be permanently reloaded. Uh, but now we've got our artillery waiting to fire onto the Chinook that we spotted that was landed and is being used to heal up or reman those infantry squads. I'm just hoping to get a good hit on target there. They're going to be hitting reinforcements on this road regardless so just going to be letting that continue to fire. MA24P getting into position. Spraying down the airman bill here. Also, MiG-25 RBF coming over, looking for a nice bombing strike onto those airmen belt. It's perfectly job done. Now, since it fly flew off to the left-hand side here, it did manage to avoid enemy AA, so it's a pretty clean strike there indeed. Really, really good to see. Now more Volpos on the way. T-62 is moving up to try and support some of the Desan Niki as my teammate just continues to relentlessly push forwards with his infantry. Ideally he wants a lot more support here because once again the AH-1F is going to be hitting these infantry very very hard. He does have an Igla here that's trying to shoot down the AH-1F. We're relying on that to hit twice. Is not something really that you want to do, at least twice in a row. So he loses two units of Desan Niki, AH1F, going to get out with half health. So two more of my T62s arriving on the left hand side. What I'm going to try and do here is get side shots onto the Challenger 2. So I've got two T72s here. Uh, we're going to get these two to join them eventually, and then we can think about engaging the Challenger 2 at close range, then we can find uh, potential side shots, if not just kind of brute force our way through the front armor at close range. We have the Volpos coming in, I've got a Volpos leader, and since things had been pushed back quite nicely here, I was hoping to get the Volpos Führer into the enemy sector so that we could start to make up some points, because we're already like 15 minutes into this game, and there's a long way to go in terms of score. <laughs> F-111E going to be hit by the books. Uh, another nice kill there for the books. The Saniki still constantly engaging. And I don't think there was really a moment after the start of the game where there wasn't two units engaging each other on the middle island. All the while on the left-hand side as well. Uh, Zato is like really, really under a lot of pressure by DSX and DSX constantly engaging him in the town. I did bring in an MI2 on my left flank cause just because I was worried of like DSX bringing troops all the way around here and cutting off our spawn. Also I wanted to keep my uh, supply safe 
which I'm using to resupply all of these rocket units that I'm going to be using throughout the game. And you can see here I do have a smirch and we've got uh, the RM70 cluster that I already used and the napalm one that I already used getting back into position. So the cluster one it's going to be looking for enemy AA pieces so the chaparral would be a great target for the cluster one. Currently reloading though. Napalm 1 obviously good for dealing with infantry, actually pretty good at dealing with armor as well. Can do some significant damage to armor over time. And then the smirch just really really heavy hitting, can more or less target anything. <laughs> Although I guess it's cluster technically, right, so you probably want to target armor more than infantry, although it can do some damage to infantry. And it lowers their cohesion as well. Anyway, KDA Schutzen going to be pushing forwards here with the SBW 152s. And we're going to be trying to engage the numerous Amabil and Armoured Rifles that have now come in to reinforce. I am moving up the Vorpursführer, mainly just to provide extra leadership to these KDA Schutzen. Makes them quite a bit better in combat when they get that one better at sea. And you can see they are starting to absolutely slice through the armoured rifles at close range. Meanwhile on the left hand side my T-62s are cleaning up the Saxons so that they aren't providing extra machine gun fire into those engagements. I'm going to shoot down another plane, the Phantom 2 going down on the right hand side as we're getting bombed here. But the, most of the concentration of fighting currently on the left hand side. Now having all of these KDA Schutzens right next to each other is really really risky because of any bombers potentially, which we have seen a lot of throughout this game. But in this case, I'm keeping them close together just so that they are extra effective at taking out the enemy infantry uh, that they're up against. So we're staying in range of the leadership of the Vorpursführer. And also I'm just like right clicking one infantry unit at times. So all of these men are firing at the same particular unit. So we've got over 40 men here, almost 50 men engaging like seven men at once and that is like a huge advantage for us in terms of overall firepower that we can leverage to take out these units over time so the emmerville slowly but surely uh, getting killed off t-34 is going to be on the way to help out that is something that uh, kta berserk effort gets access to a bunch of t-34s here you can also see that I'm now bringing in the MiG-23. The plan was to try and save these 120mm mortars of Zeto that he had on the left hand side there. MiG-21 gets a cheeky bombing strike onto the Javelin LML so that was good. MiG-23 here looking for the kill onto the M48. Unfortunately missing the second one and since it flew over the island it's obviously going to get shot down. Meanwhile on the left, MiG-21 did come in with a bit of a bombing strike here as well to help out Zeto in his battle against DSX. So things still completely wild as we have lost our positioning on the right side of the island and our opponents are now contesting us there. Spesnaz, Desaniki still engaging enemy forces in the middle of the island. MI-24 trying to help finish off the M48 and save the mortar on the left side of the island. MI-24P now engaging the uh, Challenger there, getting some Age of Gems on target. But the main thing I'm setting up for now is the KDA Schutzen supported by the T-34s. Oh yeah. So T-62 is looking to try and get side shots onto Challenger Mark II while the Kokon comes in from the MI-24. T-34 is going to be able to move up and engage these warriors nicely while the KDA Schutzen are, being, are going to be engaging the Assault Pioneers. The nice thing in this situation is there isn't really much that can kill the T-34s. The T-34s can kill the warriors, the warriors can kill the T-34s over time of course, um, but the Assault Pioneers don't have any AT weapons so that works for me. Meanwhile on the left hand side the T-62s engaging the Warriors and the Challenger here. So looking to try and kill that off. Managed to get the route which is really really good. 
all the warriors have died on the right hand side the assault pioneers slowly but surely getting run down mi-24p in a bad position opposite the rapier but my leader is going to be following up the infantry here i'm just running it forwards aggressively to avoid that bombing strike as it does come through the t-34 is now advancing very very far forwards MiG-25 <laughs> RP. Uh, MiG-25 BM Seed actually got shot down there. I think it was probably one of, from one of my teammates. But yeah, as I go through, all of the T-34s end up in range of the ammo bill here. Because there's a lot of smoke. <laughs> so we'll zoom in a little bit to see the destruction. Yeah, on the left, enemy leader has come in. MiG-21 going to be bombing the Track Rapier. Unfortunately, Track Rapier did manage to shoot down my MiG uh, 25 RBF but the MiG 21 manages to get out at least and the bombing strike certainly hit the mark as you can see so we managed to kill their leader we've got our leader into their sector on the left they've got a leader in our sector on the right but now we put a leader into their sector because they didn't have a leader there <laughs> which caused them to have to bring in another leader here so things are going absolutely wild on the island right now as we're pushing backwards and forwards against each other really trying to flank <laughs> each other in all sorts of ways and just really really cool anyway on the right hand side bombing strike hits the mark takes out the leader there thanks to the recon of my teammate and T-62 trying to beat the M-48 some warriors holding on for dear life this one unfortunately out of fuel back here they're not able to join the party but T-62 taking out the warrior Milan got some T-C-64Bs from NZO so that's certainly helping this T-62 like actually unbelievable that this thing's still alive as it then goes down to the M48. <laughs> Alright, Volposfeder currently using this uh, sort of drum here to stay away from enemy forces. I was slightly moving it over so that it was staying out of line of sight here so that we could maintain the plus six. Try and get ahead at least in points. Following that up, I now have the napalm strike coming in again, so the R RM21 or BM21 firing away, getting a, a decent amount of value in there as it's melting the M48 over time and anything that was left on the right hand side here also being hit pretty hard. Um, so this infantry for example that's forced to run out of the flames taking a lot of damage in the process. So I've got my own Spetsnaz now coming in, followed up by a bunch more T-34-85s. Right side sorted temporarily, doing the same thing here with the Vorsposkjöder. These guys just hiding behind as the massive engagement occurs against this infantry. My flat SFLs here that have been brought in to deal with enemy aircraft and helicopters <laughs> putting a lot of damage onto enemy infantry. So now we got MiG-21s coming again with their bombing strikes, looking to take out the Terriers and the M48. Going to be taking out both of those. And my MiGs are going to be able to get out alive, which is really, really good. That's going to clean the way for the T-34-85s to move forwards. It's also going to keep the Vorpostführer alive for the time being. The right side, definitely a little bit sketchy in terms of you know, the overall units that we had to defend here, but we weren't being pushed that hard by attacking. I will say that my teammate Enzido was doing a really, really good job of just keeping on the pressure throughout the game. So now I'm going to be targeting enemy AA again with the RM70 cluster back here. Uh, the Smirsh on the right hand side I believe targeted uh, some AA further back over here. We're just trying to shut down that AA 
that will open up the ability for me to use the MiG-21 Vestas more. But once again, we're in a situation where my T-34s are pretty free to engage the enemy infantry here because these are all assault, assault pioneers which have the satchel charges rather than AT weapons. Let's go and have a look at what's going on in here. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Cluster strike coming in there from the Jaguar. Gonna hit pretty hard. And at this point on the left hand side, DSX. I don't know if he drops or if he just surrendered, but either way, Zato has managed to hold the line and uh, win that engagement. So now I'm going to be starting to push back on that left hand side, although he doesn't really have much to gain. Like this is quite simply just a defensive operation from Zato here because there's no offensive sector he can take on the other side of the river. So the only thing really he can do now is maybe reinforce us in the center. Anyway, T-34s currently charging forwards, Lynx AH-7 getting some free hits on target because I had no AA nearby, bit of a mistake on my part. T-62s coming into the centre to help support against the M1 Abrams. You can see here, bringing in the cluster once again. That's going to one-shot the Chaparral. Pretty much the perfect use for the Smirsh is to just, just crush those sort of light vehicles because it's pretty much guaranteed kill. Right, Rapey FSA, easy kill for the T-34, take that out, lovely jubbly. Spetsnaz now going to be moving forwards on the left hand side of the island. Yeah, T-762s uh, now trying to get into position to engage uh, the Abrams here. At this range they have some decent penetration, you can see that the damage is pretty good. go. Abrams goes down. So we're holding the plus three quite nicely here on the left hand side. I captured a couple of Bedford supply vehicles so we're going to bring them back to get my leader back to three men, get the KDA Schutzen back up to scratch. And I've got a bunch more infantry that are going to be coming on and trying to exploit the salient that we've made on the left hand side of the island. So things going pretty well now for our team as I continue to utilize my rockets, my cheaper infantry units to just continue into the meat grinder. And the T-34s trading against like just the assault pioneers even is really really good for me because the T-34s only cost like 35 points a piece I believe yeah so really really cheap if they even if they were to kill like a scout for example which has like I guess it has a law but it just is good good value all around. T-34 killing a Milan, Warrior Milan for example. And Warrior Milan's are like 30 points I think. And um, yeah, more or less pays off the T-34. So there's there's a lot of targets that are really, really good for the T-34s to kill. Obviously you just need to be careful that you don't bump into any sort of like medium to heavy tank because then you get in a really, really bad position. Like they'll just be one popping your T-34s and you'll be getting no value out of them whatsoever. But here the T-34 is going to come through, actually find the M7, M577 at the back there. I'm going to go drive after it as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Spetsnaz are going to be getting on top of the Javelins. T-62 trying to deal with the Warrior Milan. Scouts go down on the left hand side. M577 Unfortunately, my T-34 is going to miss. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, managed to get a Bedford kill with the T-34, which kills a unit of infantry before they unload. Unfortunately, the T-34 <laughs> dies before it can get onto the enemy leader. The Milan's now proving difficult to kill as my T-62 struggles for rate of fire. KDA Schutzen moving up to support, these two KDA Schutzen moving up to try and cut off the bridge. Meanwhile on the right hand side, another push has come through and contested this sector, bringing things back to even in the tick. And now we've got another strike coming in and this is going to be the napalm once again. And this is going to be a really nasty napalm because it's going to hit the leader that was here. It's going to 
potentially hit the armored rifles in the building and even if it doesn't when they try and fall back they're going to be running into flames and it also cuts off the reinforcements so uh, the napalm strike in that area is super super good for us and going to allow us to sort of solidify the position around that bridge Meanwhile on the right, yeah, I'm waiting to kind of make a push here. We got the T-62s in position with the Vulpus uh, all of the SPWs and uh, like Mutschitz and Vulpus in those transports. Books still taking shots at this at these aircraft the entire game. A little bit lazy on my part with the books throughout this game because I should have been moving them. Uh, but here we go. Nice airstrike going to be coming in. The MiG-21 coming in with the bombing strikes. Taking out the engineers, the arrow rifles. Do lose one of my MiGs, unfortunately. But MiG-23 MFs on the left managed to take out one of the M1 Abrams, which is nice. And meanwhile, at the backside, we are hitting an AA piece there with our cluster rockets. MiG-23 does go down on the way out. Uh, this, is, this would be a great target right now for some um, artillery. So you see, I am going to be getting the Smirsh to fast move down the road and then fire position those chaparrales if they are still there. Meanwhile, the flames have cleared. And now we have the KDA Schutzen engaging the rest of the armoured rifles there. KDA Schutzen on the left, getting into good position. On the right hand side, the push has begun as my infantry move forwards, supported by their vehicles. I'm going to be a bit careful, of course, because the, the arrow rifles with the law can just one-shot these SPW PSHs. But if I can keep them pinned down, then it won't be as much of a problem. Also, with their cohesion getting low, uh, they will be suffering from accuracy problems. I managed to kill off one arrow rifle. Going to be going for the second and the third. We'll be continuing our push through on that left-hand side. Meanwhile, MiG-21... This coming in for a bombing strike onto the enemy infantry here. Take that out nicely and the MiG-21 gets away. Great thing about these bombers is they are super fast. And actually really accurate because they dive bomb their enemy. So it allows the KDA Schutzen to take that position without really a fight. Now looking to shut off the bridge once again. This time with the Smirsh. The Smirsh now getting into position to fire at where the Chaparral's were. Uh, meanwhile, MiG-23's coming over with the AT to try and hit some of the challenges. Rapier's unfortunately not able to hit the mark. So I managed to get away with that nicely. Now KDA Schutzen landing one RPG there really did a lot of damage. Meanwhile on the right hand side, here goes the Smirsh. Firing away, trying to kill off potential AA in that position. I've got artillery hitting the trap rapiers on the far side. We got the RM70 coming in here with its HE to smash the units coming across the bridge. Loads of rocket fire. Just trying to slow down our opponents as we sit on the plus six that we have got from fully claiming the top left sector of the chemical plant. Meanwhile, SPWPSH is again doing a fantastic job. Like this situation is just perfect for them, where you can get three infantry kills because they don't have any AT weapons to fight back. No cooler that. Actually using its 30 melt to engage the military police. Very cool. MiG-21 coming in with a bombing strike does help us clean up a challenger. That's good as well. And now the T-72 trying to hold the ground against the armoured rifles that are moving up on it. We have the Disaniki BMD helping from the building here. And at close range with the two machine guns on target plus the main gun, we're looking for a stun. So they can't get more of the M72 laws off. The bombing strike. Really, really clutch there. Going to help keep the T62 alive before the last shot from the law goes through. 
so now some friendly artillery coming in from the Akatsayas and Gvozdka of Zeto. My napalm strike is getting ready to hit as well as the BM-21 is ready to go again and this is going to be trying to cut off this road so that we can make another significant push through. You can see I'm bringing up more Spetsnaz. So now at this point in the game I'm making use of my more elite units that my opponent has probably already used up and that's really really benefiting us a lot because we can get way more value out of our now better units um, against their weaker units but that napalm hit really really well I believe I took out like a couple of AA pieces with it and now any units that drive through those flames trying to reinforce are going to take some significant damage Got rockets firing away again from these RM-70s. These are the HE variants. They're just going to be smashing these infantry to pieces. If there's anything else hiding behind those buildings as well, they're going to be absolutely toast. You see those fragmentation rounds blasting away. Very cool indeed. <laughs> we just set the entire backside of the chemical plant on fire. Meanwhile, KDA Schutzen trying to engage against the Bradley here and the fire team. And the Bradley is actually pretty good in this sort of scenario because the KDA Schutzen aren't that good with their AT weapon. You can see they constantly miss because they've only got 36% accuracy. We're going to have to try and take them out another way. So here comes a MiG-21 bomber gonna try and clean out the infantry does a bit of damage to the Bradley makes it less effective MiG-23 was flying overhead to try and help out as well I brought up a Conkers to try and deal with some of this armored support uh, MiG-23 managing to get one missile off there unfortunately missed uh, but meanwhile the RDM of Enzido coming in to cap this now MI8 getting into position to get rockets on the aero rifles so we're going to be able to get rid of them. Spetsnaz now moving forwards. I've got a couple of MI8 TBs further back. They're actually using, trying to use their Malioticas to help support this engagement. And things just uh, slowly falling apart for our opponents. On the left hand side doesn't seem like they really had much left. On the right hand side, same deal. So now we have even a Buratino <laughs> firing away. That insult to injury. Might end up catching that armoured vehicle at the back there, the Bradley. Most certainly will take out the M54 8A2 supply vehicle. The, the MI8s hitting hard. One of them going to get shot down by a Stinger. But with the SBW-152Ks and the SBW-PSHs now pushing through, a lot of these support weapons are in trouble. The helicopter's trying to get into a good position here to try and help out. On this right-hand side, a ton of tanks of uh, Babam von Martin are going to be hit by my cluster. We're able to take out one M1A1HA that was low on health. The other is going to be forced to retreat from that position. Baron von Martin actually making a good play going that side. As you can see that I had planned to hit the cover that he would have likely moved into and all my rockets just flooding in from across the map here. <laughs> if he had reversed into that it would have been absolute carnage. <laughs> Lucky for him, he managed to avoid it. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun with the MLRS <laughs> throughout this game, that's for sure. Even the Smirsh now firing away as well. Wasn't too concerned about it missing at this point, just because there's only 20 seconds left on the clock. It's pretty much just a race to see if we can get to the score limit before the game actually ends at the 40 minute mark. 
Yeah, you can see just how epic the game can really become when you sort of turn the score limit up on this map. And yeah, that was a seriously fun game, making great use of the, the KDA Bezik effort, uh, rocket artillery, and all of the uh, cheaper units that they have to offer as well. 10,055 kills to 5,995 losses in the end. Like, it really just comes down to cost efficiency uh, in these sort of longer protracted engagements, especially um, in the center there, where it's like much a grind. You do still need to find value in those engagements. But the book here, uh, throughout the game, didn't kill maybe as much as I hoped it would, uh, but still shot down some significant aircraft. Uh, the T-62s really, really helped me out a ton in the center of the map. Really, really good sort of engagement range for them because they can one-shot APCs at that range and they can also actually engage heavier tanks at that range as well. Um, the Napalm, absolutely fantastic. This BM-21 MVP of my artillery units by far uh, with the Chaparral kills there at the end of the mortar, even killed an Abrams in that last strike. Um, you can see here it killed three M48s at one point and a bunch of armored rifles and stuff. Really, really strong artillery piece. Uh, another T-62 doing well. The cluster targeting the enemy AA, super important. The MiG-21 BIS actually doing incredible job as well throughout this game because I was targeting the AA so much. You can see it from the smirch here. You can see it with the T-34 shutting it down as well after my push through. Another smirch killing it for Chaparral. Shutting down the AA really allowed those bombers to get some serious value. And then the RM-70 here also, again, another track rapier some infantry units, all sorts. Really, really, really cool game. Great use of artillery and uh, shows off some of the strengths of uh, KDA Berserk Effort. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.